like a trained dog over here. Like the the music starts to fade, and that means it's I have to bark. Woof! Hey, happy Veterans Day! I hope someday to be a veteran. I hope for those days. I'm praying for the day in the United States of America. I'm praying for the day that I too can join the ranks of the veterans. And you're like. What are you talking about, Paul? You're not an active duty military person right now. You are a veteran. Well, I suppose if you opened up a dictionary and looked up the textbook term for veteran, I I guess I would be covered under that. Uh, Would you say prior service? uh, No, no. No, because I don't call myself a veteran. I don't consider myself a veteran because my mission is not yet complete. My service to the nation is not over. Uh, my service to the nation can't end while we're still at war, and we are at war. We are right now in what I uh, very seriously refer to as a civil cold war in the United States of America. We have two factions within the United States of America that are battling for the souls of the American citizen. And one of them is eventually going to win out. Uh, I don't know who that's going to be. I hope it's our side. But... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and to all you veterans and citizens and students of the gun nationwide, um, I'm going to go ahead and throw this out to you, this little thought that I had. And uh, let me know if you agree. With, and and I, I don't need you to answer me right now. You just ponder it, and then I'm not going to explain it. You cannot confiscate the guns of an armed citizen, but they can be surrendered. All right, let's move on. Today is Veterans Day. Uh, Thank you very much for joining us today and for all of you veterans out there. And for all of you uh, public service employees who have the day off, you're welcome. Uh, Don't worry, we'll keep working. Uh, We'll keep contributing and throwing our money into the great big pot so that all the uh, civil servants can have today off. You're welcome. We don't take the day off. We're not taking the day off. We're actually going to do uh, on Wednesday, which is Veterans Day, which is a federal holiday. So the banks will be closed. Post office will be closed. And what we're going to do is uh, actually, as you're listening to this right now, we are in the studio. We're in the television studio recording material. We're doing material for season six, which is going to be available available. Available very soon uh, to you guys out there. Uh, Jared, do you want to remind those who are listening to Student of the Gun Radio right now that they can actually open their peepers and watch us on their television screens? We, since we do such an awesome bang-up job reminding people about that. <laughs> yes, you can actually do that. It was funny yesterday when we were ending the show and I did the whole iTunes and Stitcher and all that stuff. I was like, wow, I completely forgot about the TV show. But You're so jaded. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to tell you that you still can watch Student of the Gun TV. We are on Roku. Mm-hmm. We are on Amazon Amazon Fire. Fire TV. And uh, soon to be Chromecast and Apple. Apple TV. Apple TV. Yeah. We are on Apple TV right now underneath of another channel, but we are going to have our own channel on there. Yeah. Yeah, the Apple TV thing, right now, in the if you guys are paying attention, you any of you geeks or techies are paying attention to the app television world, uh, there's there's several platforms that are all kind of vying, you know, for, for supremacy. And the, the two that are kind of fighting it out to see who gets developed and expanded more are Apple and Chromecast. On one side, you have Chromecast, which is what? Google. Yeah. Right. So you've got Google over here on your right hand, and then you have Apple over here on your left hand, and they're they're kind of you know battling it out to see which one of them. It's kind of like Mac versus PC to see which one of them uh, can beat the other one in the app television market. So uh, we, we don't care who wins. We just want to get our show on there so you guys can watch it, and it costs you nothing if you have a, a Roku player. Uh, you just you know find the app. And the cool thing about app television is it's intelligent television, so you watch Student of the Gun, and the next day it come, you pop up and it says, suggested shows similar to Student of the Gun. Or you watch 
Shooting USA, or I, I don't I don't really watch TV, so I don't know who the other shooting shows are uh, on app television right now. But there, if there's another one, it'll say you might like this one or that one. So it learns. Kind of like Netflix, it says, oh, because you watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, you might like this show. Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Uh, What did I just... uh, We did a reboot on an old movie the other day. Oh! (laughs) Zach and I sat down and we watched the 1976 version of King Kong. Hey, yawn boy, did you know that there was a 1976 version of King Kong? No. You didn't know that, did you? Did you know there was like a 1933 version? No. No. I think it's 33. The black I think the black and white one was 33. Now now my inquiring mind needs to know. Uh, talk to the kids. Oh, I was just going to say thank you to Lauren for the the meme. She memed me. Dad's been memed before. Oh, it was 1933. Go check out the big brain on dad. 1933. You just made that up in your head and you and then you No, looked. no, no. I was I was thinking it's like yeah, the you know, if you want an original if you want the original an original Reaper, or you can buy a King Kong 1933 movie poster on eBay for $1,995. Wow, well, or I can buy a gun. So I wanted to let you guys know that all of you that were posting the Yingling pictures on the grad program Facebook page and just on the regular Facebook page, that I have Yingling and I can drink it at work. <laughs> just, just letting you know. That I can drink it on demand. You might be able to acquire it on demand, but I can drink it on demand. Did, did you know that there's an official hashtag, hashtag Yingling Smuggler? No. Yes, there is. Oh, that's funny. When I posted that picture the other day, I, I was going to hashtag Yingling, uh, the one from Instagram. And I, I typed in Yingling, and it, it auto-completed it, Yingling Smuggler. I got an insider's uh, look at why Yingling is not in Mississippi and that it might be here by the end of the year. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently distributors are fighting over who actually owns mm. Yingling. So distribution rights. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, what's funny if so if you if you <laughs> this is okay, but if if you put in Yingling smuggler, if you put in the hashtag, it's people filling up the backs of their trucks <laughs> and and vans and stuff like crossing state lines. What a genius marketing scheme that is. Yeah. You, you're, as a brand, you have people who are deliberately driving across state lines it's, to yeah. get your product. Yep. That is genius. Well, here at Student of the Gun, we actually deliver our product to the world. So we that do they don't have to be, they don't have to smuggle us anyway, actually. Well, there are probably some places yeah, where you have to hide. Yeah. I imagine people in California gather together in their basements. You know, they lock all the doors, close the curtains, and they gather in their basements to listen to us. Jared's up there in his probably in, in this, Connecticut with his buddies in, in his basement. They're yeah. hiding in, in the cellar, yeah. listening, so that the Stasi doesn't find out. Uh, hey, today's Wednesday, and because it's Wednesday, it's SWAT Fuel Fitness Talk Day. And I know you guys are all giggly. You're all antsy and you're pantsy, and you're thinking, what's Jared going to talk about today? But before Jared talks about that, because he's going to, you know he's going to, uh, let's go ahead and uh, thank. Let's get the uh, the commercial break out of the way. Thank our buddies and drive on with our life. Actually, I'm kind of excited because I'm, I'm very first and foremost going to thank Crossbreed Holsters, Crossbreed.com. They have a brand new product. Dur, 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 dur. Crossbreed Holsters has a new product that they're calling the Freedom Carry, and you're like, what? Freedom That's Carry? That's reason enough for me to buy it. Is that like? Is that like Freedom Fries? <laughs> you want some freedom fries to go along with you? It's back when we actually still gave a crap about our liberty. Uh, yeah, the Freedom Carry, it's a new one. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if it's on their website yet. I just got the press release for it yesterday as we were preparing this show. Uh, it is a new adjustable appendix spleen carry type dealio. Uh, so check them out. Go to Crossbreed Holsters. Dot com, And uh, if you're not into that appendix carry or spleen carry or whatever, you can always just go ahead and hip carry and, and get yourself a, uh, a Bruce Jenner commemorative there. Is that is that right, Jared? The Bruce Jenner Yeah, Bruce Jenner. Okay, cool. All right, moving on from them uh, to Century Arms, the sweetest smelling arms maker in America. They make the TP9 SA. What's up, SA? And uh, they make the SA. It's the V2, a TP9 V2. V2. 
V2, uh, not the rocket, not the buzz bomb, but the... Uh, how many of you... You know what a buzz bomb is, Jared? Mm, nope. Nope. He doesn't know. He's a kid. The bomb that goes... Bzzz. Yeah. Oh, it's an electric... It's an IED. No. No, you have no idea. Just EMP. Close your mouth. You no. You don't have any idea. It doesn't buzz you no. like the no, electricity? it doesn't buzz you. No. Okay. All right. Frog lube. You're not going to tell me what it is? No. It was... there Back in World War II, the Germans developed uh, rocket systems to deliver bombs. Uh, and they had the V1 and the V2. And the original one, they called it the buzz bomb because when it was going, it was a go. Oh, you so could hear it. And they call, and the, in, in England, they called them the buzz bombs. They go. And it wasn't that big of, while you were hearing it, you were okay. It's that when the noise stopped, because it would, it would fly. And while the rocket engine was going, it would make all the noise. Then it would stop making noise and fall and explode. So when you stopped hearing the noise, it was about to get ugly. And then they developed, so they had the V1, then they developed the V2. Thank the Lord they didn't have a V3, 4, or 5. And thank the Lord that Einstein saw it coming and went to the United States of America and didn't hang out with the Nazis because the world might have been a different place. But that's something for a fiction novel. Frog lube, it just works. It's green, it's minty fresh, and they make the frog lube, what is it? What is frog lube? I, I, I refuse. You refuse? Extreme! I Come did, on. I did that to Alex last night. I said I said extreme, and I did that. Extreme! And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know where I got it from. I don't know where I got it from. I don't know where he gets that from, kids. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? I don't think we thanked SWAT fuel yesterday. SWAT fuel? Yeah. Did we thank SWAT fuel we and Crossford yesterday? Uh, I don't know. We got so excited. I got I got so into the Marine Corps birthday thing. I don't know if we did, and if not, I, I truly apologize. And I'll say them twice today: SWAT fuel, SWAT fuel, crossbreed, crossbreed. Oh uh, no, actually, uh, SWAT fuel. Uh, they do have the promo code SOTG two zero one five crossbreed or SWAT. Oh, what is the new thing for SWAT fuel? It's not no velocity. Vo- oh, velocity. That's right. The new thing for velocity. Don't so what, call me out. Don't don't call you out on it for quality and. Let me look at my Dude, email. come on. You got to write it. You got to put it in the show notes so that when we're yakking and, and talking and squawking and stuff and, and tweeting and I know doing we, other I know, stuff. I know that our listeners are out there like, it's, it's, you know what it is. You tell know what tell it me, is. Come on, tell me. They're yellow, screaming at their radio. You love the speaker so yes. loud. <laughs> their radio. <laughs> like, they're, like it's 1932 and they're sitting in their living room staring at a big wooden box. I'm yelling at my radio. <laughs> Superiority, quality, and value. Superior. Did, did you I said do it again? Superiority again. I did. He retarded. <laughs> Superior quality Maybe he's and retarded. value. <sighs> no, he's not retarded. He just is wearing tan trousers and red argyle socks and, and red shoes. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> Velocity triggers. Superior quality. Superiority. Qu- oh, You're retarded. I'm trying to read too fast. Arr, Superior arr. quality and value. And value. So. All right. And uh, where can you get Duracoat? Duracoat can and can technology. Where can you go online to buy that? From Brownells. Brownells.com. Yeah. What do you, uh, have you looked on their site lately? Which one? On Brownells. No. What's up there? Oh. I don't know. I just wondered if there's anything new that you noticed. Oh, like but I, they have If you go to studentgunradio.com, I actually redid the little... Uh, it's going to sound boring, but it's really not. I redid the sponsors page, and I'm actually kind of proud of it. So you should go there and look at the stuff. Yeah, somebody look at that crap. He spent a lot of time back in his office doing that. So click on it, you freaks. It was time. It actually does look nice. Yeah. You can scroll across. Yeah. Oh, you can click. Clickety, click, click. It's even alphabetical because I'm OCD. Make your, little, make your little finger go across there and clickety, click. You know what's funny? Yesterday... Or, yeah, yesterday we went to, um, what's that paint store? Uh, Sherwin-Williams. Sh- ask, I we went know, to did you ask them something? Yes, I asked them. Um, I, we were in the paint store, and there was something that was out of place, and I, I fixed it because I am like that, and I have to. everything has to be neat. And the lady that was in the store, she said, oh, thank you. You could stay here all afternoon. And I was <laughs> like, no, I, I'm That's good. That's okay. I would lose my mind. That's okay. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. It's kind of like when you walk through the aisles of Walmart and people like go into the grocery aisle and decide that they don't want that hair dryer and they just stick it on the bread shelf. 
Oh, I changed my mind. I don't I'm want too, this hair. I'm too lazy to walk back oh, to the. Stick it on the bread shelf. Somebody else will come by and fix up my mess because yeah. I'm a lazy slug. Yeah, there you go. All right, are you ready to give them the? You know they're they're all antsy and the pansy over the SWAT fuel fitness talk. So, are you ready? We're going to have a celebration today. That's what we just did. We just had a celebration, and Dad's over there dancing for it. I want to talk about celebrating your victories. Uh, reward yourself. You need to make what you're doing, what your journey is, your goal or your journey to your goal. Make it fun for yourself, or you're not going to want to keep doing it. So you need to reward yourself. And how do you reward yourself? You set goals. You have an end goal, and then you have like little milestones along the way to that end goal. Once you reach a milestone, reward yourself somehow. Don't go out and eat 37 pizzas if you're on a fitness journey. <laughs> if you're on a fitness journey, fitness don't, go, pizza don't in fit my mouth. 37 pizzas in your mouth. Don't go fitting pizza in your mouth. Yeah, but do yeah. something fun. Uh, take take a day off. Take a, a weekend off with your family. Go travel somewhere. Go, I don't know, do something fun. Whatever you consider fun that's not eating 37 pizzas. 36 might be okay, but that one extra pizza. That's right. That's, that's right. one too many. Oh, and you don't have to be a monk, too. This, a lot of people in, in this weird world that we live in, they're like, oh, I have to cut out all my favorite everything. No. Yeah. If you cut it out, you're, you're going to crave it, and then you're going to binge. So just eat a little bit of it at a time. Well, and, you know, the truth of the matter is, all right, I was when, when I was younger, when I was in my 30s, I was fat. You know why I was fat? Because I still thought I was in my 20s. Because you ate a lot of good food. Yeah, really, seriously. Yeah. I, w- when I was in my early 20s, I had a high metabolism. You know, and of course, I was, when I was in my early twenties, I was in the Marine Corps, so we PT'd all the time. So we PT'd all the time, and I had a high metabolism, so I could go out and I could drink beer and I could eat pizzas and I could do whatever, and I nearly gained a pound, right? So I got used to that, and then I get out, I get, I got, a, I got an office job where I was sitting in an office most days, and I got fat because in my mind. I was still 23 years old, working out, high metabolism, doing all that, but I wasn't. I was in my 30s. I was sitting my fat butt behind a desk, but I was still, you know, eating. We had the, Satan would come into our office every morning around 9, 930, and Satan had this giant basket of, like, fist-sized muffins. This, it was the muffin lady, right? The muffin lady. Hey, hey, you guys want to get something? Oh, the muffin lady's here. The muffin lady's here. And she had like every flavor, chocolate and blueberry and, and you know, and all that. And and they were really good. Triple they were like, chocolate They chip. were like fresh baked muffins. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's a muffin. It's not a cupcake. It's like muffins are like cupcakes without frosting. <laughs> There's a crap. Li- and so I already had breakfast, but I was like, oh, man, it's like 930, almost 10. I got some coffee. Yeah, let me have one of the muffins. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan. My point is this. You don't have to be a monk, but you need to think about what you're doing. Uh, you don't have to torture yourself. You don't need to. You know, but right, Great example. Stop drinking your calories, freaks. And if you think about it, if you consider, like, American culture, think about the, the caloric intake in just beverages every, that people do. Yeah. It, it, Dude, uh, what, oh, I have an idea. Go ahead. Actually, it Send was it. this morning I was listening to one of the podcasts that I listened to. It's called Warrior on Fire. And he was talking about gamifying life, if that makes sense. And it's basically what he does with his kids is he they get – they can get up to five points every day if they do if they when they get out of bed in the morning or they brush their teeth they make their bed they do all the stuff that they need to do and then when they go to bed they do whatever they need to do at bedtime they can earn up to five points and that makes it fun for them it's it's a reward thing i guess i don't know it just makes it fun but do that with your uh, workout routine or or do that along your path along your journey to your goal is gamify it Make it fun. Give yourself a point structure and actually record your points. 
Because it, I don't care if you actually have prizes or not. If there are points involved, it makes it more fun. It makes you feel like you're reaching something, reaching you know, some kind of goal. That sounds like something that like that would be in a book written on child rearing. Oh, about really? Like, yeah, about hmm. making things fun. Oh, make yeah. it a game. Yeah. It. If you want your kids to learn a valuable lesson, make it a game and make it fun. They'll have fun. They'll do it, and they won't realize that they're learning. They'll just they'll just be learning. Because if you tell them, okay, we're going to learn a lesson today, they're like, I don't want to learn a lesson today. I just I want to have fun. So you make it fun, and then the kids do it. There, there's a book coming up very soon about raising your kids and and how you can do that and things games you can play with your kids to make them situationally aware and teach them to deal with emergency situations without turning it into this big traumatic event. <gasps> what? crazy no way. and in addition to that we're going to have stickers and t-shirts we're and gonna... probably <laughs> something else that's really cool really besides stickers and t-shirts yeah something with mookie oh no oh yeah oh i forgot about that yeah that's even cool oh something that's black and goes bang mm, or could potentially go bang <laughs> all right all right so uh is that it for the uh, thank you king julian for our Physically fit, uh, physically, physically, physically fit. Yes, that is it. I just want to let you guys know that you need to go ahead and uh, reward yourself. Reward yourself. Have some fun. Gosh, you know, I mean, as serious as we are here, you're like, you guys aren't serious at all. We are. Don't accuse me of not being serious. Oh, actually, that is not all because I need uh, to. Uh, what? The whole reason I wanted to do the reward yourself thing. Oh, it's Diego. Yeah. One of our grad program members posted uh, before and after pictures in our um, grad program group, and it was Tiago Garcia. And he it says August 2015 and November 15. And there's a huge physical difference. But it says that he uh, 105 pounds down, 94 more to go, 95 to go. Woo! 105 pounds. I don't know if that was. That's with, like two people. Yeah. I don't know if that was within the three month period. August and November, that's a lot of weight. I don't know how Yeah, I don't know. That. But that's, uh, that's congratulations, Tiago. Now go reward yourself. So I forget who it was, but um, oh, it was Dr. Dan. It was Dr. Dan. I was talking to him uh, over the last year or so because, uh, as you guys know, we've talked about the, the gym. And, and, and uh, when I, I, was, I got stuck and I was basically plateaued and I was getting frustrated and I talked to Dan and I, I changed things up a little bit. Oh. Uh, but I told him I got down, I dropped 25 pounds. And he says, he goes, you want to realize how much weight you've actually lost? He said, go walk into the gym and find a 25-pound plate or a 25-pound dumbbell and pick it up and hold it in your hand and realize that's how much weight I took off of my body. Yeah. And I did that. I was, I was like, wow. Yeah. You don't really think about it when it's like distributed around your midsection, but when you when you hold it in your hand. So if you're like Tiago, you go into the gym, you pick up like two forty five pound plates and cradle them, and think, "Wow, that's how much lighter I am." Yeah, wow, that's crazy. And it's easier to get in helicopters. That. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it's just I'm just saying it's easier to get in and out of helicopters when you're a little bit lighter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember the first serious when when I, I and it was in the military on the Marine Corps, and I knew things were real serious when we were going to get on the cod for my first carrier arrested landing, and the the crew chief came around and got all of our weights, and he's like, "Look, don't guess or estimate." He goes, "I need to know how much you weigh," because he was calculating that like the physical payload or the physical amount that it, between the passengers and the cargo and that little. Uh, turboprop airplane that was going to fly out to the aircraft carrier. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah. That was the first time that I'd ever had someone before I got into an airplane ask me my weight and tell me they needed to know exactly what it was. I'm like, oh, I'm like okay. Yeah, unlike uh, that's a, and that's a great if you talk to a helo pilot, that's a great thing between helicopters and airplanes. Like if an airplane is overweight, it'll roll down the runway and it'll keep rolling and rolling, and you're expecting it to come up off the ground and it doesn't. <laughs> Then there's like things in front of you that you shouldn't be running into, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, no more runway. <laughs> you know, with a, if you talk to a helicopter pilot, they're like, 
if we're too heavy, this thing just won't lift off. <laughs> That's just going to be, I'll know because we won't get off the ground. And I'm like, okay, somebody's got to get out. I don't know who it is, but someone's getting out of here. It was like when we were helicopter hog hunting and uh, we killed like a 250 pound boar or something. And he says, well, here's the deal. If you want a trophy, you can get out. We can load that dead pig into the back seat and you'll stay here yeah. <laughs> while we deliver it. He goes, because the hog and you are not both going in the backseat of the helicopter. That's not going to happen. <laughs> we didn't have a CH-53 or anything like that. It was just a little one. All right, moving on. Jared, uh, you go ahead and, and cue me in with one of our absolute favorite theme songs. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Das geht an die Oma des letzten Propheten Mohammed Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ich bin ja so dumm, ein Muslim sein zu dürfen. Das geht an die Oma. Wir sind die Oma. Check das aus. Bismillah. Oh, I love that so much. Oh, that is one of my favorite update themes. It offends all the right people. And the, the, the great thing about that song is, about that update theme, is if anyone were to tell me that it had offended them, I will know instantly that they are a human douchebag and that I should cease listening to them. So that, that's one of the nice things about it. Oh, and, and another nice thing about it, a, a friend of mine told me that he was, because of family like concerns, he was going to have to attend a lesbian wedding and he's like and he told me he said yeah it's it's one of those things where the wife and here's the deal women you women don't know what you're doing to screw up america by browbeating your husbands into doing things that they shouldn't be doing like going to lesbian weddings and you think you're being reasonable because you have these like these emotionally charged woman brains you need to stop that crap Okay, I'm just just saying. All right. So this gave me the opportunity to think. I was like, you know, and he, my my friend said he goes he goes. I was thinking of giving him frog lube as a wedding gift. <laughs> <laughs> the extreme. And I said, you better do the extreme. Better give him the extreme. Oh. <laughs> he, <laughs> um. I said, okay. Let's just say in the hypothetical that I was invited to a homosexual n wedding ceremony, which really isn't technically true. You can't do that. Uh, in the eyes of God, homosexual people can't get married. You can play little games with yourself uh, all day long. You can try and change the world and you know look down between your legs and see twigs and berries and say, I'm really a woman. No, you're not, okay? You can't change nature. You can pretend for a while, but you can't change it. But anyway, let's just say, in a, a strange hypothetical world, I were to be invited, uh, I figured out the perfect wedding gift. Oh, that, that's why you text me that. I yeah. was wondering. Yeah. So here's what, uh, if, if I ever had the opportunity uh, to be invited, and, and maybe I'll just send the gift in a card and with my regrets that I wasn't able to attend, I think that the the religion of peace, the death cult playbook would be the perfect gift for a homosexual wedding. That's right. I found a use for the Quran. Go ahead and give it as a gift to the bride and bride or the groom and groom at your favorite homosexual wedding. That's and pretty funny. That's like pulling the pin. You just pull the pin, toss it, and walk away. <laughs> All right, uh, we've got a uh, Muslim missionary, Muslim missionary named Faisal Muhammad. But we're going to pretend like that has nothing to do with Islam and the religion of peace. This story is so effed up. Number one, when the story first broke, it was reported. This is the one that was reported as, uh, well, it wasn't reported at all. And then when it was reported... It was a full 24 hours after the story broke at Merced College, right? So a uh, Muslim missionary goes on a little mini jihad, right? Uh, four people stabbed, a serious condition. Police uh, confront, you know, got man with knife, shoot him. Faisal Muhammad, 
Yes, little little Faisal, little Faisal. The UC Merced Stabber wrote, "Praise Allah." Plans for beheading in his manifesto. All right, step number one: lessons learned. It was a full twenty-four hours between the time that this occurred and the next day when the mainstream media, the CNNs and MSNBCs, reported this turd's name. And you're like, Paul, you're you're breaking your your rule and you're using this guy's name. I know the reason I'm doing it is to make a point. The point is this: Do you really look at me? Look at me. Do you really believe that the mainstream media puke faces? didn't know this guy's name when they started running the story this happened in the morning so by the afternoon by lunchtime it was everywhere right but oh oh, the identity has been yet to be confirmed identity is under investigation identity blah 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 right by the next day 24 hours later we're in a new we're in a new cycle so, oh, we're all done with that story. We already reported that. We're really not excited about that anymore. If uh, Lil Faisal, if he would have used a gun, if he used a G-lock or something similar, don't you think they would have broomed all of the other stories and talked about gun control and how this just proves a need for more gun control? Um. Uh, yeah, so step number one, if you really are, if you're still on the fence about the the US media being on the side of the jihadists being against you the american having an agenda their naked agenda this is just one of many stories it says down here there was nothing on his computer or in his dorm room or in the manifesto to suggest any ties to terrorism or terrorist groups you mean the whole act of stabbing people wasn't the whole, like, a kind of a hint the, that he was into terrorism? Oh, the fact that his brothers over in, in Israel are have gone on a stabbing rampage, that they're, that's a, a pattern of behavior. You don't suppose that little, little Faisal Muhammad, you don't think that he knew all about the, the fatwa and the little jihad that was going on over in Israel? Were the Palestinians, when all his uh, religion of peace brothers and sisters, all the Muslim missionaries are attacking citizens, soldiers, police officers, you know, you, you think that's a, that's an isolated incident? You don't think he knew this? You don't think he was a copycat? Oh, no, no, there's no reason to believe that this guy would take a knife and, and you know, do a mass attack in a gun-free zone where the people he's attacking can't defend themselves or choose not to defend themselves. Uh, choose to be deliberately disarmed. Oh, so first, they the media couldn't seem to find his name. And then we were treated to all these left-wing California idiots, these these college... If you ever wanted to know, if you, if you thought to yourself, are colleges in California breeding grounds for lunatics, for soft-minded, emotionally driven lunatics... The answer would be yes. So by the end of the day, by the next morning, the lunatic left on this campus had put up handmade signs that said, ban the NRA. Because apparently now the NRA is to blame for Muslim missionaries getting a hold of sharp objects and attacking people in the name of Allah. Did you know that that was the NRA's fault, Jared? No, I was not aware. If we would have banned the NRA, little Faisal Muhammad, he wouldn't have been able to get a sharp object and attack people with it. That darn NRA. And then they're like, and then there was another one that said, "Ban all knives." Are you retarded? You know, a human being had to sit down with markers and and poster board and make a thing that said, "Ban knives now." Are you kidding me? Are you retarded? Are you mentally unstable? What are we creating on our campus? Camp I. What are we creating out there on our Camp I? A bunch of soft-minded, emotionally driven morons. So we've got that. We've got to get another point. So 
First, the media couldn't find his name. They just misplaced it. The, you know, and They waited until an entire day had gone by when we had a new news cycle when there was other things. Maybe there was a soccer game or, or maybe one of the Kardashians like let her nipple slip out of her top or something. You know, Something to distract the masses. Ah, oh, look over here. Look at my left hand. Well, oh, crap. Then, well, they reach into his pocket... And what did they find? Oh, they found his his little uh, his little jihad manifesto there. Oh crap! And in his little jihad manifesto, he was like, "Oh, praise Allah, praise Allah." Oh shh shh shh! We're trying to cover this up for you. Shh! You can't be doing that. We're 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 carrying your water for you there, little uh, you know, go rapist in training. You got to stop saying that stuff. It's really hard for us to hide it when you write in your manifesto, "Praise Allah." Have you seen what kind of knife this dude had? Uh, I don't know. Was it an assault knife? I, I don't know. They describe it as an eight-inch hunting knife. And I'm well, I heard it was a ten-inch knife. I'm, I'm well, sometimes ten inches and eight inches are well, confused. Well, yeah, especially by dudes. But <laughs> but what I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out why they used eight-inch. I mean, not eight-inch. Why they used hunting knife? <laughs> As a description, I don't know what I mean. Uh, I don't know. You could use any knife. I don't know. Uh, here we go. A California college student who wounded four in a campus stabbing spree Wednesday wrote a manifesto including the names of his targets, a vow to cut someone's head off. There's no terrorism, Jared. Who is it? Which which death cult uh, is what part of their their rite of passage is sawing off the heads of infidels and holding them up and smiling? Uh, Buddhist monks. Oh, oh, no. Shinto priests. Oh, uh, no. No, oh, uh, Southern Baptist ministers. Oh, come on now. There's got to be. Who's the death cult that likes to chop off their enemies' heads and and, and atheists? Mm, no, no, I don't know. I'd better search for it. But anyway, he says, and uh, as many as five reminders to praise Allah, praise Allah. I'm going to cut people's heads off. There's no terrorism there. There's no reason to believe that his faith in in Islam had anything to do with this. Some. Oh, I wish this was the grad program. Some misguided a hole jumped into one of our, that's yours and mine, conversations on the old social media there and and wanted to school us about how xenophobic it was of us to point this out and how there was no reason to believe that there was any tie to the religion of peace and brotherhood. Yeah, there's none there at all. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Oh, oh, <laughs> and it gets better. Now, here's the thing. The only people that know about this now is us, you and I, because the, the mainstream media, they're pretty they're bored with this story. This does not help them sell their agenda. Uh, this doesn't help them sell their whole Islamophobia, misunderstood, misunderstanders of the religion of peace and brotherhood and all that stuff. This doesn't really help them with that. So they're they're kind of off onto another thing there. There's like, oh, you, there's nothing to see here anymore. The story's over. The story's over. Let's go away. I just saw another story as we were prepping this that the sheriff in Merced County said there was no reason to believe that there were any terror ties and that his reference to praise Allah is no different than a Christian mentioning Jesus in their daily discussion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I go out and stab people. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, all the time. There's like, um, you know, Christians are out there just like cutting off heads and saying, you you, you ever hear about the the Christians that that walked into the, uh, uh, they went into the, the marketplace and told everyone that they needed to declare, to profess Christianity or they would be killed? Did you hear about that? No, I didn't hear about it either, but, you know, what the heck. Oh, no. This is, uh, here we go from BizPack Review, Campus Knife Man. I like that. He's a knife man. He's not a gunman. He's a knife man. Campus Knife Man. Oh, I've got a BizPack uh, thing, blah, blah, blah. Go away. Pop up ad. With plans to behead was on a terror watch list, but who was watching him? 
Well, I'm sure J. Jonah Johnson was watching him closely. Remember, the head of Homeland Security, J. Jonah Johnson, has assured all of us that while they're not even really going to try to keep terrorists out of America, you know, all these guys that were overseas and, you know, getting their jihad on in Syria and northern Iraq, and then they, like, come back. We can't just keep them out of the country. Uh, but but we'll, we'll watch them. Watch them do kind of like the, the the guys that they were monitoring that went to Texas from Arizona to kill those people in uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, like those guys, those ones that they were watching. How many more people on the the terrorist watch list are going to kill American citizens before we decide that you know rather than watching them, let's just go ahead and get them the hell out of our country. We could do that. Oh, you can't do that, Paul. That's xenophobia. If you've ever said the word xenophobia in a serious context, you are a douchebag of gargantuan magnitude. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. So what did we learn here, or have we learned anything? Well, lessons learned. Number one, we have yet another Muslim missionary who, despite not having a firearm still attacked and intended to murder innocent people. The only gun involved did a really good job. The gun involved in this ventilated this piece of human filth, and now he is worm food. Now he is fertilizer. So go team there. Bad people with bad intentions are always going to find a weapon to hurt good people. Oh, but the college was, this was in California where they have really serious gun control. And you know what? I bet in California, it's against the law to conceal a large knife on you. I bet it's against the law. But he still did it. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You think that this, that the UC Merced was a weapons-free zone, Jared? Do you think on the campus policy statement that if you went to campus rules, that it would say that it's a weapons-free zone. Probably. Oh, it's a, it's a gun-free zone. It's not, and they've gone way beyond. It's not just gun-free. It's weapons-free zone. It's probably a hurt-feelings-free zone. That's why I can't go to college. Yeah. It's a hurt-feelings-free zone. You know what really pisses me off? Ooh, I don't know, but tell me. The fact that these uh, every time something like this happens, the dude that did the uh, <laughs> that was the terrorist is... His face is put all over the news. His name's put all over the news. Why don't we stop? Just stop talking well, about him. No, dude. Well, yeah, they will. Every they time. are. They are. They, they've stopped talking about this guy. They, they have. But the, it's still the, the whole reason these people do this that aren't this dude, that well, aren't, that aren't see, Muslim missionaries, are the, the the lone wolf, the whack jobs, like the the Democrats, the registered Democrats, like the guy in the, at the movie theater, yeah. the dude in, in Connecticut. You know, all the registered Democrats, the uh, the our excrement down there in, in, in was it North Carolina or Virginia? Virginia, uh, the co- and copycat excrement. The reason they do it is for the notoriety. Uh, the reason that Muslim missionaries do it is because they're on a mission to kill you, the infidel, because you are too stupid and weak to protect your own country from these monsters. Because you're really concerned about being fair. So remember that when the blade touches your neck, I want you to think about fairness and equality and tolerance as the blade is touching your neck. Because when the blade touches your neck, it's too late to change your mind, as my good friend Jay Gibson likes to say. So lessons learned. Number one, bad people will always get objects, guns, knives, whatever. They will always arm themselves to hurt you. If you are a good person and you deliberately disarm yourself, you are wrong like dick cancer. You are a victim. You are part of the problem. Number two, naked agenda. The U.S. media has a naked agenda to try and cover up the monstrous and barbarous actions of these animals who you've allowed to come in and populate your country. Sorry, you screwed up. It's not going to get better. Covering for these people does not make them go away. It only emboldens them. This is not going to be the last time this happens until we nut up as a nation and decide, you know what? 
we're sick of this. We're not going to play your silly little game anymore. It's going to keep happening. When are we going to nut up? I have no idea. Apparently, your friends and neighbors think this is just business as usual. Or it's an isolated incident. All right, kids. That's all I have to say about that. Remember, you're a beginner once, but you should indeed be a student for life.